మనము చూపే సోదరులెవరో మహిమను morning and happy sabbath to one and all and if you're watching it another day of the week happy whatever day of week it is i'm so glad you tuned in and are listening to god's words and god's story it's so interesting and i enjoy so much studying and then passing on what i learned to you 
I am in the book of Deuteronomy. If you were with us last week, you know we did the first two chapters of Deuteronomy, and I'm doing three and four. And what uh, Deuteronomy is, is the fifth book of the Torah. It is the last book. This is about a month before Moses is going to die, and the people are crossing over into the promised land. And he is doing an in, a, a quick, in-depth, but a Reader's Digest shortened version of the past 40 years because these people's parents or grandparents have already passed on. And he is trying to remind them what life was like and what, why they were out there for 40 years and how the parents and grandparents had blown it and trying to teach them that God is right there with them. He's watching them. He's present. This isn't them out there in the wilderness by themselves, that he is aware of what they are doing. And he will fight for them and bless them, or he will condemn them. And this is what Moses is telling. So before we get started into the lesson, we always start with a word of prayer because we need God here. He is the teacher. I'm just an instrument. I know nothing without his guidance, without his leadership. I'm lost. So let's think of Jesus. We want the prayer to leave here. We don't want to stay on earth. So picture Jesus in your mind. Dear Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, dear sweet Jesus, our Creator, Savior God, and dear Holy Spirit, our teacher, guide, and comforter, I come to you in prayer. I plead with you in prayer to be present here. Please, dear Lord, fill this house and our minds and hearts with your presence, with your Holy Spirit. May your angels encamp around us. Lord, we need you. We, we are lost little kids, and we need your guidance. Please help us understand what these words mean, what you're trying to show us and teach us so that we're not lost and we're saved, and we have that beautiful reward of eternity with you and all of what you want to give us. Thank you for being our God. You are an awesome God. And I ask you in prayer, please open the minds and hearts of all that are hearing or seeing this, no matter when that happens, and help it penetrate and be fruitful. Thank you for being our God. We love you desperately. Through your love and your blood, we pray and we ask the choir in heaven to sing a thank you from us to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now uh, let me change glasses. Now, as I said, Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Torah. Moses wrote it, but God gave him all the information to write down, and that's what he did. And so he is going over these 40 years in the uh, book of Deuteronomy. In fact, the word Deuteronomy means to repeat or remind. Uh, some Greeks thought that it meant a new set of laws. No, it's the same set of laws. It is just being repeated and given again trying to keep the people from wandering off into, they're going to a new land, new people, new styles. Now, a bunch of those people will be dead, but not all of them at once. And they are going to be enticed to come into their world. And Moses and God are trying to protect them. Now, as we go into chapter 3 of Deuteronomy, Moses is still... Uh, speaking to the people who are living in the wilderness and reminding them of the history of their and their the, of theirs and their families' lives for the past forty years, Moses said, "Now, and as he's speaking to him now, after uh, chapter two, we turned and went to the land of Bashan. There, the king and all of his people came out to war against God's people." God said, do not fear. God is going to fight with you and you will win. God gave to you the people, the land, and the king of Og and Bashan. See, he's reminding them. A lot of these people weren't at that fight. This was 
many years ago. But he's reminding them, this is what happened. And they won because God said he would fight. God gave them victory over 60, three scores, walled cities. Now, these are big, expensive cities. I mean, we're talking like Las Vegas size. I mean, major cities, 60 of them. And it says, and many smaller towns. God said, take the cattle and the spoils as payment for you for going out and warring. We even took the land of the last king of the giants. Remember, in Genesis, there was mentioned giants. There was giants of the land. Well, this was the last king of the giants. He was a giant also. <clears throat> It says, you took the bed of iron, and the bed was 13 and a half feet long and six feet wide. Very large bed. Made of iron, very heavy. God said, um, the men shall be armed and will go up and do war. And all the cities that they win on when they go. Now, this was over a period of years. All the cities they win in, it says, unless God told you to, don't burn them. And it says, then your wife, your children, your cattle and belongings can stay in those cities while you go to the next, wherever God is leading you. You shall go and possess all the cities and the towns that I tell you to on this side of the Jordan River. And when it is done, you shall return and collect your possessions and your families. Now, in Deuteronomy 3, 22 through 29... Let's see what it says. You must not fear them, for the Lord your God fights for you. He is going to be present in this bat these battles. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, Oh, Lord God, you have begun to show your servant, that's Moses, servant Moses, your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God in heaven or on earth can do anything like what you have done. Your works and your mighty deeds. You're great. You're wonderful. I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan. Those pleasant mountains and the land of Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account. Moses had lost his temper and did something against what God said. Because the people had harassed him and made him mad and uh, would not listen. So the Lord said to me, enough of this. Speak no more on this matter. Go up to the top of the mountain and lift your eyes to the west, to the north, the south, and the east, and behold with your eyes, for you shall not cross over the Jordan. Now I assume that when um, Moses went up to the top of the whatever mountain it is there that God gave him a vision of what the promised land was and what it looked like because it was huge. It says in the Bible that the promised land went from the beginning of the Euphrates, which is in Turkey. And it says it went all the way over to Egypt. This is very large land. Okay, let's see what else it says. Now Moses sees that the sin that he had did against God was not going to be forgiven and he will die in the wilderness on that side of the Jordan River. But the people will be led by Joshua to the other side. In Deuteronomy 4.1, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I have taught you to observe. Moses has taught you to observe. God taught Moses. Moses is teaching you that you may live and not die and go in and possess the land that the Lord God, your father is giving you possess the land. Oh, you shall not add to the words which I command to you, nor take it away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. All right, but remember, he says, you will possess the land. Well, it's a land of milk and honey. Milk referring to goats or cows or something. Honey meaning bees where there would be flowers and such. What he's trying to say is, and I'm putting it in picture form, is he's saying these 
orchards will already be planted and producing. These gardens will be producing. When you go to war against these people and God is with you, the people will be no more. But their possessions, their land, and their gardens will still be there, and you will possess them. Now Moses says verily, very strongly to the people, if you are going to live, listen to all the laws and the statutes that I, Moses, have taught you. In Deuteronomy 4.2, you shall not add to or take away from what I have commanded you or take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which God, as well as Moses, has commanded you. Moses is warning them. Now, in the book of Revelation, which is the last book in the Bible, chapter 22, which is the last chapter in Revelation, verse 19, it says, And if anyone takes away from the words of this book or the prophecy of it, God shall take away his part of the book of life. You know what it says in the Bible? If you're not written in the book of life, you're not saved. From the whole and from the holy city and anything else that was written in this book. Then in Proverbs, now we're going to the Old Testament, but many years after Moses, we are going to Proverbs, and it says, oh, Proverbs are after Psalms. Pay attention, Susan. Um, 30, 5 and 6. And it says, Every word of God is pure. He is the shield of those who put their trust in in him he is the shield he protects you he shelters you do not add to his words lest he rebuke you and you be found out to be a law a liar and then in deuteronomy 12 32 it says whatever i command you be careful to observe it you shall not add to it or take away from it Moses isn't commanding because it's Moses' law. Moses is commanding the people because he is their, he's their nanny. He's their caregiver. He is the babysitter for God's children. And he's commanding them to obey the laws that their parent, God, has given them. Moses is still warning the people that, the, that you have seen what God can do to people who love other gods wipes them all out, but to his people he will keep them safe and alive. Moses says, I have taught you the commandments that God has taught to me, parent to child, generation after generation, forever. When you go into the promised land, keep them. Now, it doesn't mean keep them for a day or a week or a year, but forever. Keep these laws and you will have the wisdom that of God from God and other nations will notice and say what a nation which God which has a God so near to them and such a God of power and love this God judges righteously Moses warns to be careful and not to forget these laws and commandments and to remember to teach them to your children generation forever now Moses brings up the story of them traveling to Mount Zion, also known as Horb, and God spoke with his own voice. Now, as I was saying, they got to the mountain, and God said for them to put a rope around the base of the mountain. And he says, if anyone or any animal passes this area into, you know, goes under the rope, they shall die. And so for three days, you were to clean your tents, clean your clothes, clean everything, and then come and meet with God. Now, you had approximately six million people, mixed races, people fall over. When you've got that many people traveling, there's no way you know what's going on the mile behind you or, you know, 20 miles behind you. So when they got there, they were settled in and they started visiting. And especially on the day that they all came to the mountain. 
And, you know, they're going to say, oh, look, look how Johnny has grown. And, oh, you're having a new baby. And talk, 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 talk. Nobody noticed the big black cloud coming over the mountain that was carrying God. They paid no attention. Well, God didn't try to outshout six million people, though he could have. He didn't. He caused a huge earthquake. And the ground shook so hard that Moses said that his knees trembled together. And then lightning and thunder shot out of the clouds from all over. And the people shut up and were real quiet. And they listened to God's own voice. God's own voice speak the Ten Commandments. And they promised God as a people that they would obey and follow his commandments. It's sad that they didn't, but they didn't. But God was showing that even though you don't sing because you have sin on your eyes, he's right here. He's present. He's present in my house right now. I've invited him here. And he is here. And he was showing them. But they didn't listen, which is real sad. Okay. Um, let me find out where I was. Mount Zion, here we go. Now, I'll say God was so close to them in the black cloud that Moses said his knees shook together. You can look that up in Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 21, when Moses reminded them that he had to go up the mountain, because God says that in a few days he had to go up to the mountain, God gave, while well, he was up on the mountain, that there was just a few days since God spoke his words, God was writing down the commandments with his own finger in stone to show it can't be erased. It's in stone. It is there forever. But while he was only gone 40 days, the people fell away from the sincerity that they had had when God had spoke to them and convinced Aaron, Moses' brother, that and obviously he was not a strong person that could control the crowd, and he built them a golden calf for them to worship. Now, as I've said before, I truly don't think that they wanted the calf to worship per se. I think after 200 years as being slaves in Egypt with not having any knowledge of a living God, they were used to seeing gods that they could see. You know, though you're made out of stone and can't do anything for you, but they were used to seeing gods. And when Moses was gone, they had taken Moses as God, which he isn't. He was just a man. But Without Moses there to look at, they needed, they felt like they needed something to stare at. And so Aaron built them the golden calf, which was against everything that God had said. But it still happened. Then Moses reminded them that he had to go up the mountain, and the Ten Commandments were written by God's own finger in stone. God said, make no image, male or female, animal or anything else to worship. But what did they do just a few days after Moses started, had started up for his 40 days on the mountain? The golden calf. God loves you all so much, Moses says, that he has forgiven you and you're still his people. Now, this is against everything. God has spoken. God has fed them. He has clothed them. He has loved them. And yet, they turn from him so quickly. I mean, I don't know when the actual golden calf was made, but I'm going to say probably 30 days, a month, after Moses went up the mountain. How sad. But God says that he would forgive them if they would repent and come back to him. And they would still be his inheritance. They would inherit what he had promised. But Moses, who was a servant and teacher of God, is judged much harder. 
And it says in Deuteronomy 4, 2024. Let's see what that says in Deuteronomy 4, 2024. I think this is right. I think sure. Yeah, there's four. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace out of Egypt to be his people and inheritance for, for you to be his inheritance. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sake and swore that I would not cross over the Jordan River and that I would not enter the goodly land which the Lord your God is giving you even though you're the ones that worship the calf. But I must die in this land. I must not cross over the Jordan River, but you shall cross over and possess this land. God's going to forgive you because of your ignorance. Take heed to yourself, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make yourself another carved image or form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. He doesn't want to see you worshiping things that aren't living. He is the only living God. Okay. Now Moses reminded them again, when you have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, warn them not to make images of anything that our God is invisible, but he's always present with us. When you go across the Jordan, you forget, and you forget what I have taught you, God will scatter you around the world and you shall be few in numbers. He's going to scatter you like the wind. He isn't going to bless you. You'll be few in numbers. And where you go, the men of that land are going to make you worship their gods. Their gods made of wood or stone, glass or gold that do not see or do not hear. Only if you really seek God and re, really come to God with your whole heart. Let's look at Deuteronomy 4, 29 and 30. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with your whole heart and all your soul. This is after you've already blown it because you've forgotten God, and he's scattered you around the world. You can still come back to him, but it's going to be some work on your part. You're going to have to seek him with your whole heart and all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, that refers all the way to now, latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, your Lord God is a merciful God. Isn't that nice? He forgives. A lot of people don't. Now Moses asked the people to have, have they ever seen or heard of another God that spoke out loud to their people? And they said, no. He says, but our God did. Out of heaven, God made it possible for us to hear God's voice so that he could talk to us and help us and show us. He gave food. Now, you got to remember this manna that fell was so healthy for the people that they didn't need fruits and vegetables. It had everything in it. It came from God, free. He gave them food. He gave them water. He caused a cloud to shelter them from the heat of the desert for 40 years. Every day, they, maybe during the winter, it wasn't so hot. Maybe they didn't have the cloud as thick. I don't know. But it says it would turn into a pillar of fire at night so that they could work and walk through their camp and see. So they had food and shelter. Clothes, it says their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. In 40 years, yeah, as your kids outgrew your, their clothes, you passed them on to 
younger kids and older kids pass their clothes down to you, but the clothes never wore out. God was so good. He loves you, and he is giving you such protection. God has loved all of his children and their children. Moses says, know this and keep it in your heart. The Lord God is a God of heaven and of earth, and there is no other God. You shall always keep his commandments and statutes so it will go well with you and your children forever. Now Moses did some business. Now on this day that he was talking, this is all being written down, he ended the day speaking about some business. Remember all those cities that they have gone into warring and God says don't burn them? except the ones he told to burn. Now Moses did the business. He picked three cities, God told him to, on the wilderness side of the Jordan River, east of the sanctuary, to be sanctuary cities. For if a person should flee by uh, to any of these cities because of an accident that he killed somebody, we're going to say, oh, he is tiling a roof. He's up on a ladder, and a tile slips out of his hands and hits a guy below him, and it kills him. Well, this guy's family is raging mad. You know, they want to take revenge on the guy. It was an accident. He can flee to these sanctuaries, one of these sanctuary cities. There's three of them on the Jordan side. And they cannot take him, cannot hurt him, till a year has passed, and then they have a court, a judgment to see if he was if it was done out of malice or if it was truly an accident in other words it gives them a year to have tempers calm down well uh, God has said I uh, told Moses to pick three cities east of the sanctuary to be sanctuary cities for a person to flee to if by accident he killed a person and that he could stay there until the hate was gone and calm minds took over and correct judgment of the case could be done. Those cities were for the people in the wild, on the wilderness side. Three more cities later, we will find out that God told uh, Joshua's people to pick on this. Now, this side was Moses. Joshua's side to pick to be sanctuary cities on that side of the river, the promised land side of the river. Now, see, God knows that, that when accidents occur, people sometimes just, you know, lose their minds and out of grief and mad and tears. But when they are thinking clearly, they can see it with clear vision. They wouldn't, they wouldn't act like they would when they were mad. God is, is showing them that he is planning for their future. This isn't for immediately crossing Jordan. This is, you know, 200, 500, 1,000 years later. He is planning these things in advance to help the people see that he's with you. He is planning for your future. You weren't planning for your future. He was thinking ahead. And he was planning for your future. Always remember, the Ten Commandments are to be the guide. I put it this way. The path to heaven is narrow, the Bible says. It's narrow. It's a narrow road. And the only thing that keeps you on that path, from falling off that path, is the fencing on either side. And that's the commandments. If you obey the commandments, you will stay on that narrow path. You won't fall off. It's when you do not obey them and you break through those commandments, that fencing, that's when you fall. God is a loving, merciful God, and he knows that we are his children. And just like I've told other people, I said, you as a parent of children, will always feed and clothe and care for your kids. But if they're obedient and loving and caring and do what you ask them to, 
you are going to be more gracious to them, more giving to them. So is God. He wants to give so much. He it says in the Bible, you as a sinful person can give good gifts to your children. How much more can God give us if we obey him and follow him, loving him? He will give us so much more and you will be so much happier. Please connect with him. The days are shortened. I truly believe with all of my heart that we are within two, three years of the end, unless I'm misunderstanding what I've read through the Bible. The signs are there. And God always gives us warning signs before he does anything. And I truly think it's coming. And I want you saved. I want to meet you in heaven. I want to sit and talk to you. Just like Moses worried about all those people. Six million. He worried about them. He wanted them saved and he kept saying it over and over again. So you need to obey the laws. Follow the teachings. And you'll be happier, but you'll also be blessed with such power. Can you imagine going to battle and having God standing next to you, guaranteeing you can't lose? Wow, that's something. Well, until next week where we will do, be doing five through seven, and I will be reading the laws as Moses read them to the people to remind them, I will be reading them to you too. So you have a wonderful day. This is going back to Anthony. Anthony will add more to it. Pay attention, Anthony is a good teacher. He really is. And all of this is for your benefit, to help you, because we love you, and we want you to be safe and sound and saved in heaven. Have a great day. Bye-bye.